This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles, Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 16, Functions with Return Values, Puzzle 7. Use a function that returns a value in an app. Perfect. We created functions to contain we create functions to contain blocks of code that will be used multiple times within our program and for readability and efficiency, but anyways, the same is true for functions that return values. Let's see an example of how we might use one of the functions we've written. This exercise comes with starter code that creates a simple turtle driver app. It does. Can I drive it? Oh, I'm hitting. Oh, I can. Okay. Um, the X and Y locations of the turtle are stored in variables X lock and Y lock. An event handler is used to update these values when the arrow keys are pressed. And then a separate update turtle function is called to draw the turtle on the screen. Currently, we can drive the turtle off the screen. If we are clever about how we use our constrain how function, however, we can prevent this from happening. Yes, we can. Start or do this. Starter code provided that is provided, which allows the turtle to move. Additionally, a working version of constraint is provided. Call the constraint function twice within the update turtle function to prevent the turtle from going outside the screen. One call to the function for x lock, one time for y lock. Recall the screen is 320 by 450 pixels. Run your app and confirm the turtle cannot leave the screen. So, update turtle. I'm going to switch to blocks. Let's look. Move to, okay. Within update turtle. Well, we already have x lock and y lock here. So, where's our constraint? The input. Okay, so this is the variable we want to check. This is the low number, and this is the high number. X lock and Y lock are X and Y variables. So I'm thinking what we're going to want to do is boom, we are going to need an equal sign or two, right? Let's start with X lock. So X lock, and then we're going to call our function, which is constrain. And then what are our parameters? Well, what do we want to check? What input? Oh, I want to check the X location. What's the low value? Uh, well, it just said zero for X, right? And then the highest value is what it just said. The screen is 320. Whoops. So I have, I'm going to run this constraint with X lock as my input, low value and high value. And what I'm going to get as an output, well, it's either going to be 0, 320, or the original x lock value. Okay? Now, y lock. And this makes sure they never go off the screen. Because if it's, if it's 450, my turtle's just going to be stuck at the top of the screen. Because all this will ever return is the actual max value it can go. So, now y lock, same thing. We want to test out y lock. Our minimum value is 0. Our maximum value was 450 for the screen. And now, keep in mind, it's going to run this and it's going to stop us. If I try to go to 460, it's going to run this y lock function and it returns 450 here. So I'll always be stuck there. Let's test. I can't go farther. Ah! And if you don't believe me, uh, that would be zero. Let's do. The top of the screen is actually zero. Watch. You can do 20 if you want to test it. Oh, no, I can never go farther, but I could back up. I can't go all the way off, though. Cool. And so this is going to be super handy for all sorts of things, even like gravity, maybe. So the tricky part was checking and then reassigning, right? We make x lock equal whatever constraint returns. Sometimes it might be the minimum or the maximum. Maybe I should check. 
See, it can't go off the side either. Sometimes it might be zero, sometimes it might be 320, and oftentimes it's just going to be where the person hit the key to move to. Awesome. Let's keep going. 